Hello, we represent the Robotic Human Augmentation VIP team, led by Dr. Aaron Young in the Exoskeleton and Prosthetic Intelligent Controls Lab. Our lab, known as the Epic Lab, is devoted to the design and the improvement of more intelligent control systems for our robotic platforms. The Epic Lab develops intuitive wearable robotic devices and intelligent control systems to help individuals with impairment and disability. It starts from fabrication and benchtop testing, and moves to controller optimization, and ultimately measuring the effects on human performance. Today we're here to showcase some of our exciting projects with a focus on the prosthetic team. When considering wearable robotics, our groups fit into three main use categories. Health and safety, which is designed to limit the risk of injury. Rehabilitation, which is designed to restore motor function in cases of injury. And mobility, which is designed to increase the autonomy and versatility of affected individuals. Under our first category, health and safety, the back exoskeleton team has developed a power device designed to reduce the load on the lower back when carrying heavy equipment. The device utilizes motors and onboard sensors to detect when the user is performing a task to provide the correct amount of assistance. The target use of this type of device is for individuals working in industrial settings. Another focus in the lab is the rehabilitation of users that have motor deficit disorders. One such example is the pediatric knee exoskeleton team. The project aims to provide assistance to the knees of children with limited mobility, in which they tend to hyperextend their joints while walking. Similarly, a hip exoskeleton device was developed to help individuals that have experienced stroke. This team aims to help patients incapable of producing sufficient muscle and joint movement by providing powered assistance to both hip joints to reduce asymmetric behavior. The hip joint was targeted because it is considered to be the second largest input of energy during locomotion. Another team that focuses on increasing mobility is the prosthetic team. Those who have undergone above knee amputation often struggle during community ambulation tasks such as stairs and ramps when using traditional unpowered prostheses. We are combating this by developing a powered knee ankle prosthesis which allows for enhanced mobility and quality of life when compared with its passive counterparts. Why is this important? Currently there are approximately 300,000 people living with above knee amputation in the U.S. This number of affected individuals is only growing, stemming from a variety of reasons including trauma, diabetes, congenital limb deficiencies, and cancer. This often results in joint pain and degradation. With other great advances in technology over the years, one may expect that a modern passive prosthesis could be equivalent to a human leg. However, there are many key activities that a passive device just can't emulate. Specifically, because the passive device can't provide power, the user can't climb stairs or ramps in the typical step-over-step -step fashion. This severely slows the user down and further limits their autonomy. The most prevalent solution, as mentioned, is the passive prosthesis, which doesn't provide any propulsive force. These solutions often feature separate knee and ankle joints connected via a pylon. For straightforward movements such as walking on a level surface, a passive prosthesis is often considered to be the ideal solution. However, the same cannot be said when the user attempts to climb stairs or inclines. When climbing stairs, the knee is bent at a significant angle when one pushes off of the leg. In a passive device, there is no way to straighten the knee when pushing off due to the lack of propulsive power, and the leg would simply lock in place. As such, the wearer is unable to climb in a typical step-over-step -step manner. Our way of addressing this problem is through the use of a powered knee and ankle prosthesis. Through the use of electromechanical motors and embedded sensors, this device allows the wearer to ascend stairs and inclines using the traditional step-over-step -step technique. Additionally, there is an adjustable height insert designed to accommodate people of varying heights and differences in the length of their affected limb. Recall, one of the main goals of our lab is the development of intelligent control systems. To achieve this goal, we are developing an intent recognition system that can decipher user needs. Currently, when switching between different modes of ambulation, the device must be manually triggered into a certain walking mode. Intent recognition seeks to remove the need for an external operator through the use of machine learning. Our team has performed numerous user studies by testing the prosthesis on individuals with above knee amputation. Feedback from previous subjects is fairly consistent. The weight of the current device is one of the largest concerns. After extended periods of use, the weight of the device begins to cause fatigue and detrimentally affect the wearer's walking and climbing abilities. For this reason, the next iteration of our powered knee ankle prosthesis is currently in development. This device is significantly lighter than our previous solution and when combined with our findings from the current device should result in a best of both worlds prosthetic leg. Advantages of this leg include reduced weight, compact design, and better wire management.
As powered prosthetic technology becomes more prominent, the advancement of smarter control strategies will yield many benefits to these users including increased quality of life. Currently, the knee ankle prosthesis has been designed, manufactured, tested, and enhanced. Development is ongoing, but has transitioned to the new version, and our focus has largely switched to making the control system autonomous and intelligent. We hope to start patient trials soon, at which point we can begin to customize the device given our findings from the first iteration of the prosthesis, and can then work on the implementation of the intent recognition technology. We have two iterations, where one has been used in research testing, and the second is currently in development. Future testing will focus on removing excess loading from joints on the user's sound leg. It's difficult to assign a dollar figure to the cost of manufacturing such a device. The development cost for similar devices is in the ballpark of twenty to thirty thousand dollars. The difficulty in bringing such a device to market is not necessarily its cost, but more so proving its clinical efficacy. With similar devices, it can take around five to ten years to bring the product to market. If we are successful in our work, the mobility and autonomy of those who have undergone transfemoral amputation would be greatly improved. Additionally, development of the second version of the leg will allow other researchers to expand upon and further develop this beneficial technology, thus enhancing the field and helping to reduce the time it takes to allow this technology to become commercially available. The future for exoskeleton and prosthetic research is an exciting and promising one. New developments will yield massive improvements in the prevention of injury, the rehabilitation of those who have experienced previous injuries, and the restoration of mobility in those who have suffered lower limb loss. Thank you for your time.